this is Kenny from Albot here for Strangel to talk a little bit about neutral density filters, um, specifically as they regard to the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. Uh, we were out shooting these Atlas Orion tests, as you can see here, and uh, because of the shininess of the monitor uh, and perhaps a little bit of uh, rushed testing, we didn't notice that when we put the ND filter in to show um, the characteristics of those lenses, this happened. Now, <laughs> you'll notice that my shirt has gone completely maroon, and honestly, it doesn't look bad. It's just absolutely incorrect. I actually think this image is kind of pretty in a way. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a dark blue maroon shirt. So what we're seeing here um, is uh, infrared interference. So essentially what that means is that uh, there is infrared light not being cut by the sensor or by an infrared filter um, in front of the sensor, which when you use an ND, um, you get IR pollution. I don't know the science of it. I only know the practicality. Uh, probably could have looked that up. Anyway, to show what the difference is here, we've got a couple test cameras. We've got the C100 Mark II and the RE Amira to show uh, how other cameras would handle this. So you'll see we're cycling through IRNDs, regular NDs, wide spectrum NDs in various strengths. Obviously, as you ramp up the strength of the ND, the infrared pollution will become more apparent if there is not some kind of cut. Um, as far as color correction is concerned, all I did was drop them into Resolve and use the color checker there to automatically make a match. And I did so across all of them. Uh, in the case of Black Magic Raw, you know, I just set it to Rec 709. I just kind of tried to 709 everything. Um, but I can also put a uh, non-colored pass in here, um, which could be, I'm sure, interesting to somebody. So at, if you'd like that, let me know uh, in the comments. But as it stands right now, this is just to show how the various cameras handle these strengths of ND. Now, the Amira and the C100 Mark II have built-in ND filters in the body, um, which we did not use. Uh, we used the same NDs for all three of the camera tests. We'll get to the black magic here at the end. Um, but we thought it was important enough to bring up because that the pollution was absolutely absurd uh, on that shirt. I'm wearing the same shirt in this test, although it is a different day. Um, but yeah, so this is not an issue necessarily with the black magic sensor, although practically that's where you will... Uh, see it apparently after some research I found that there just isn't an IR cut on the black magic sensor so or at least in, in, a, in a filter um, even now you can see in my shirt here that the uh, even with no ND it is a little purple instead of blue and that kind of talks about something that I was saying earlier about the color on the black magic being pretty but perhaps not entirely accurate um, the wide spectrum ND here kind of is showing us the same thing. Now you'll see here, my shirt start, started to go really purple with the three stop ND. Um, as we move forward, that will see infrared ND brought that down a little bit, even though that shirt is still supposed to be, you know, bluish blackish kind of, um, it's largely okay. Back to the 1.2 ND, it has gone purple. Now we don't have direct sunlight in this shot, obviously. So that is changing things up a little bit, but uh, you can definitely see the pollution there. And there we've stopped open a little bit. Um, so we thought it was worth bringing to your attention uh, just to show you kind of what the look is. Maybe you want that as a look. Maybe that you're into that sort of thing, but uh, we were not at the time. So that's that. And I hope you found it informative and you will see us next time.